Hi, I'm Gio. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel, Gio Zavaya How To. Please hit subscribe and stay tuned for new videos. When you upgrade your Avaya Communication Manager, you also have to upgrade your Avaya Media Gateways. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your Avaya G450, and this procedure is the same for an Avaya G430. First, we're going to download the latest Avaya firmware, then we're going to upload it to our utility server, then we're going to download it to our Avaya Media Gateway, and finally, we'll upgrade our G450. The easiest way to get a list of the latest Avaya firmware is to Google Avaya firmware. On the results page, click on Download Latest TN Circuit Pack Server. This will take you to the latest TN Circuit Pack Server and Media Gateway firmware and software updates. The items you see at the beginning of the page are the G650 peripheral boards, also referred to as Circuit Packs or TN boards. As we scroll down, you will see the firmware loads of the G450 and G430 Media Gateways, and today this is what we will be working with. Avaya develops each former version in series for their communication manager version. For example, CM release 8.1 uses firmware 41, 8.0 uses firmware 40, 7.1.3 uses firmware 39, which is the one that we will be using today. So I'm going to click on 39.27 for G450. Before you load any firmware, always make sure to read the readme file, which is located right here. I'm going to click on this link and open the file. This file contains contains important installation information. For example, if you scroll down to pre-install instructions, you have an important note here that tells you gateways using a release prior to release 7.1.2 must first upgrade to release 7.1.0.4, build 38.21 or 38.21.32 before installing release 39.27. Our gateway is running release 39.16, so we are good. When you are ready to download the software, just scroll down and click on the link of the software that you will be downloading. This link here will take you to PLDS where you will be able to download the software as long as you have a valid account. I have already downloaded the firmware ahead of time so we are good to upload it to our utility server. Then we'll go to our media gateway and run the download and installation command. To access the administration page of your utility server, open a web browser and type https colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of your utility server colon 543 forward slash admin dot html once logged in you will be in the administration window navigate to gateway firmware and click on upload gateway firmware next click on browse and navigate to where your firmware is located then click on it and click open once you're ready click on upload gateway firmware and activate after the firmware is successfully uploaded to your utility server you will see the following success message next Navigate to application control and click on TFTP server. Here you want to make sure that your TFTP server is running. If it's not running, then click on start the TFTP server to start the TFTP service. Next, I have logged on to my media gateway and I'm going to type show image version. This has displayed our boot bank and boot bank A is running the current firmware version. We are going to upload our new firmware version 39.27 to boot bank B. The command we're going to use to upload our new firmware is copy space TFTP space SW underscore image B for our boot bank B space the file name of our firmware space and the IP address of our utility server. Then I'm going to press enter. It's asking me to confirm and I'm going to type Y for yes. This has started the download and to check the process, I'm going to run the show download software status 10 command. As you can see, the gateway is preparing to download the firmware. My first attempt failed, but I reran the download command and my gateway is now downloading the firmware. If I run the show download software status 10 command again, I can check the progress of my firmware being downloaded. As you can see down here, the number of bytes is increasing. So this tells me that the gateway is downloading the firmware from the utility server. I'll give it some time and uh, check in a few minutes to make sure it has downloaded. Our firmware has finished downloading. I type show image version and as you can see, the new firmware is located on boot bank B. Next, I'm going to make boot bank B the active boot bank by typing set space boot space bank space bank dash capital B. Then I'm going to hit enter. Then I'm going to type show image version. As you can see, boot bank A is still the active boot bank because we have to reboot the gateway before our chain takes effect. But before we reboot, we are going to write our changes to memory or else boot bank B will become the active one. To save your changes, type 
copy space run space start then hit enter our changes have been saved and now we can reboot our gateway by typing reset it's asking me if i want to continue i'm gonna type y for yes and hit enter once i hit enter our gateway is going to reboot our gateway has finished rebooting i'm going to type show image version and as you can see we are now running on the new firmware next i'm going to check the server to make sure everything is running as it should First, I'm going to type show fault. There are no alarms. Then I'm going to display all of the boards by typing show mg space list underscore config. All of the media modules look like they are in service. Every now and then you might get a board that might not come up, but everything looks good in this case. And this completes our tutorial. Today we have downloaded our firmware from Avaya. Then we uploaded our new firmware to the utility server and activated the TFTP server in utility server. Then we downloaded our firmware to our G450 media gateway and upgraded our media gateway to the latest 39.27 firmware for our 7.13 communication manager. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit subscribe and stay tuned for new videos.